Hi there, I'm Rebecca and a really warm welcome back to my channel, Pumpkin Becky. In this week's video we're going back to Bonsai and we're going to be taking a look at one of my favourite broadleaf evergreen trees, the olive. Let's get started. It has been so hot here in the UK, it has been high 30s pushing up into the 40s at some points on some days and plants actually stop actively growing during that time they go into a kind of summer dormancy where they're just trying to protect themselves from those kinds of heats so trying to work on my bonsai tree during those times of actual stress for the tree is pointless and would probably end up killing the tree so I actively step back from those trees just let them be keep watering some days I was watering some days three times a day definitely twice a day hard work <laughs> they'd moved them round into a place where they weren't getting direct sunlight for most of the day they were just getting a little bit of evening sunlight because even first thing in the morning it was just blasting I also went round and removed all the slow release fertilizer blocks from the trees because when you're in that kind of intense heat the fertilizer is actually competing with the tree for resources, particularly water. It's uh, in the soil; it acts as a salt, and there's a whole thing to do with osmosis and osmotic pressure that I don't really understand, but um, it's a thing, and it prevents the tree being able to utilise the water that you're giving it properly, and it needs that water to act as um, a kind of air conditioning system. Allowing your trees to grow freely for a little while can also help improve their vigour. So if you have a tree that is struggling slightly, just letting it just grow on, or maybe a branch that is struggling, getting a bit spindly, just leave it let it grow on if you're managing the growth in the rest of the tree the tree will move its energy into that piece that you haven't pinched or snipped or anything uh, because hormones <laughs> oxin is the growth hormone that forms at the tips and it's what allows branches to elongate if you pinch that or snip back a branch to two buds to encourage it to bifurcate then you're automatically dividing that oxen from one branch one stem one shoot into two and then as you continue dividing you're then spreading it between more and more shoots which is great it helps balance the energy of the tree if you want one of your branches to continue elongating to give it some vigour or perhaps to thicken up the branch that it is coming from then by leaving it as a singular piece of growth that oxen is all concentrated on that one growth point you're not dividing that growth hormone between two sources of demand <laughs> okay enough uh, Let's just dial you out a little bit and have a look at my little olive. I love my little olive. Um, it has grown on freely all summer long. It did get a little bit of a prune back right at the beginning of summer. Um, but yeah, it's gone a bit crazy. There we go. Here she is. This is my longest branch and I mean you can see it's gone really wild, really woolly. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> It seriously needs some attention. We've got a little bit of stress damage here. We're starting to lose a little bit of foliage. And we can see that here on the pot. So I don't want to go too hard on this tree right now. Um, we are definitely in a significantly cooler period in the weather. 
which means that the trees will begin active growing again shortly. As I said, they have this sort of summer dormancy period, uh, so they will then pick up growth again. My aim today then is to try and bring this tree back into some semblance of its its form uh, and we're going to tidy up here on the soil surface as well. This weird thing here is actually a fertilizer pot, a fertilizer holder thing. Um, that fertilizer is well and truly dead so we don't need to worry about that. So looking at this tree I do believe this is the intended front so that you've got the root over lump of lava <laughs> ish and you've got the deadwoods coming up here. So the framework is quite open at the front you can see quite a lot of the trunk I think what I'm going to do initially is reduce the length of some of these really long whips. Um, I mean, you can see here how ridiculously long the internode length has become over the summer. That gap between internodes is, is too long and it makes a tree look juvenile. So basically so that they're not just getting in my face, I'm going to just take them back to an outline without removing options. Okay, that's, that's brought it back into some semblance of order. The next thing I'm going to do is come in and have a look at branches that are crossing or perhaps have died back. Now, with olive, don't be too hasty to actually cut off dead pieces. As you can see, deadwood is a beautiful feature of olive trees. Olive is forgiving and it will send out back buds from very, very old wood. So again, just don't be too hasty with it. Make thoughtful pruning decisions. I've got a lot of growth going on in here and that has troubled me for some time. I, I really don't want that many stems emanating from the same position. It will cause this to bulge and give us inverse taper and I really don't want that. I'm going to actually remove this branch because it grows into the centre of the tree and we don't want that. That is a fault. So I'm going to prune back initially. I'm also going to come in and remove that piece because that grows into the center. Here I've got two branches very close together and we have another two here and a thicker one at the back which is where our super strong branch was coming off. I've got another strange piece here, very thin piece of structure that comes up off a piece that is already divided. You sort of have a slight dilemma. At some point 
these thicker branches are going to need replacing. They will become too thick for the overall line of the tree. They will look unsightly. So you will have to replace those those really thick pieces. I'm thinking about the one that was attached to that really fat, long branch. But I don't think we're there yet. But I will also begin, quite possibly already have begun, to get some inverse taper here. So I am going to remove that one. It is squished and it is not helping. Oof. Okay, so this piece is trifurcated. So we have a piece of growth coming off here, we have a piece of growth coming up, and we have a piece of growth coming out here, and that has bifurcated. This piece is very weak. This piece is, because it's growing upright, is is strong, but is it too strong, too thick? Possibly. It has also trifurcated here, and it has trifurcated here. Ugh, gosh darn it. Okay. I am going to remove this piece, and that will leave me with one, two, Does anybody else do this with their bonsai shears? Uh, they always pinch me just when I'm snipping. Uh, I'm going to remove the piece that is growing into the back. Okay. And I am going to remove that very vigorous upright piece. I bought this tree back in February this year and I've been kind of waiting to let it settle in before I wanted to do any major work to it but the way it has been grown has uh, has unfortunately um, a lot of faults have a lot of trifurcated branching which is definitely leading to swelling in stems where it shouldn't be doing it. Um, I don't want to go too hard on this poor little tree but <laughs> um, you know this is necessary work. And maybe that's just something to know, that an olive likes to trifurcate instead of bifurcate. And it's important to manage that. It's actually also very easy to get lost on a tree um, when you're trying to do this kind of work, counting your, your growth and trying to remember where you got to. Ideally, when we're cutting a trifurcation back, we would tend or try not to lose the centre one because you then end up with a very wide space in between the branches and it can sort of form a T shape. So you would more likely get rid of one of the others so that you have a a more acute angle between those branches. Sometimes that might not be possible and you just have to manage that. And that's where it's important that you know your tree. Now I do just want to point out that my trees all go into a greenhouse over winter. It's an unheated greenhouse 
but it is still offering protection from extremes of temperature. So doing this degree of work at this time of the year, I'm not then going to leave my little tree to just deal with the rigours of nature. <laughs> When I'm pruning, I'm also thinking directionally. So I want to think about where those where those leaves are coming from and where they're going to encourage the growth to go to. This branch is very coarse as it comes all the way up here. And in fact, it remains coarse all the way out along its length. I'd like to prune back to some of these smaller pieces of growth to try and lighten that branch a bit. I'm going to be quite tough with it, I think. to avoid encouraging branches to grow into the canopy of the tree so when I'm pruning I have to think about about that the leaves where they point is where the buds are going to be generally speaking so they will begin to form the new branching structure So whichever direction that leaf points is the direction that that growth is going to take. Uh, I don't have any buds further back on that one. I'm going to have to come up a bit higher. The other thing I need to think about here is that this is an incredibly straight piece of growth, as is this. So they've been allowed to grow sort of quite hard and fast. We have virtually have a trifurcation here with this branch what I'm thinking to reduce the impact of this um, overly wide crutch is actually to remove this branch and this end piece and let the branch develop from here and continue this piece It's going to be finer growth. And more in scale with the tree. So keep coming back to the front view of your tree. Just keep an eye on, on what you're doing. Think in terms of good horticultural practice. that your aim is to always remove the vigour of branches and balance it across the tree to remove those trifurcations so that you lessen the chance of branches swelling abnormally I'm actually going to take this branch out it is a trifurcation and I have some nice soft growth coming elsewhere and that has revealed a little dead branch in there. I'll take you out. I think too late doing it. Remember 
where you have a bifurcation and you're doing a cut, try not to cut both pieces at the same length. You want to end up with one part of the bifurcation longer than the other. That helps it look more natural. Here I have a piece that I've just cut off. So I have a single leaf and I have a pair of leaves. Rather than trying to cut back here, where the internodes are really tight, I should actually come out here to just before they start to elongate. And that will give me a more natural looking division. as well as removing those overly elongated pieces of growth. See that is a nice a nice angle of bifurcation there. It does have a slight bulge and it is slightly fatter than this piece here. And I might have to look to replace that with some other growth. You can see that the interior of the tree has become quite starved of light and that's demonstrated by long pieces of growth with very little branching or leafing on just like this piece here now that it's much more open to the elements we should be able to induce a bit of back budding happening as a novice trying to approach this tree, it can be really difficult to get a grip on what needs doing, what you can leave, what you need to leave in place to build on. And you have to be aware of what is going on elsewhere in the tree. You can't just take a branch in isolation. Some of these pieces that I don't like, I think I'm going to have to leave for another time. Allow the tree to recover a little bit before I try and take any more off. I mean, I've got an awful lot of very straight growth. and in some places not very much movement at all and that is just how the olive grows it, it puts on so much vigorous growth in a season and it grows long and straight we saw that at the beginning I believe what I needed to do was actually pinch out some of that vigorous growth much earlier in the season As I turn the tree, we can see that the growth comes from two main points. We have a cluster of growth coming from here, and we have another cluster of growth coming from here. Neither of which is an ideal situation, because both points have too many things happening on them. But, because that is how the tree has been grown, if I try and remove any more than I have done, I will lose any real shape to the tree. Yes, so I'm, I'm definitely coming to the end of what I can legitimately do today. That is the, uh, the joy and the pain of bonsai. <laughs> you cannot sit down to work on a tree and end up with a finished tree like some sort of art project it, it doesn't work like that I'm definitely going to put my scissors away now and come along and just clean up the soil surface I notice that the soil is starting to look quite broken down, so next spring we'll probably have to do a repot. I'm 
I'm just going around now and removing any any leaves, dead leaves, but also any roots that are literally just hanging out in midair. They're not doing anybody any good. So I'm just going to take those out. There's no harm doing this little bit of detail work. We're not actually root pruning. We're just taking off dead pieces of root. If they're not going into the soil, they are not feeding this little tree. Well, <laughs> that's a very different little tree to the one I started out with. I got to the point where I just, I literally had to put my scissors down because I really need this tree to bounce back now and help me make good decisions on that, how to get rid of some of that coarse straight growth and the only way we can do that is by creating new growth, new back buds that can take over from those, otherwise <laughs> it's going to essentially have to cut the whole tree away. <laughs> right, well that's it for this week's video, thank you so much for watching, please remember to rate, share and subscribe to me here on YouTube and until next time, bye!